So let me go into the uh, the compliance management. Um, so in this particular scenario, you know, what, what I wanted to show you is how we perform some of the config management within Atom and then how we can do that compliance check, making sure that how we can maintain this, those configurations, how we handle the reporting and also the remediation. And I also want to show how we can bring in the workflow aspect into the compliance as well, and how we can just plug in the compliance into any kind of automation that you're trying to do and kind of make sure at the end of the automation, a uh, particular use case that you have a, a compliant set of configurations that have been pushed. So this is where, uh, let me go back to this, uh, uh, use case here. Uh, so here, the uh, I'm, I'm on the on a particular device uh, profile page, and I'm on the configuration section. So we go ahead and archive the configurations at regular intervals, right? So it can it can be again a, a scheduled archival, or it could be based on a trigger, right? So let's say somebody has gone and change, go ahead and change a, a particular configuration. We can make sure that the, the the that is immediately notified to Atom using an SNMP trap, and then we pull that configuration and then make sure that the, the configuration is even on both the sides. And then you know, we also allow you to go ahead and uh, uh, tag the configurations. So you can say this is my golden config, or this is my silver config, and you can actually utilize that uh, you know in our using some of our operational workflows. For example, like there could be an RMA scenario. So in the RMA scenario, you would want to give that, okay, you have two set of devices now, but what is that configuration that you want to make sure, uh, or the, that version of the configuration that you want to make sure gets passed onto the new device. So this is where in the RMA inputs, you're going to give that those details. Along with that, you're also going to feed in that particular version uh, of the configuration as well. And then we go ahead and take care of the RMA process in this particular workflow. Okay, and then uh, you can also go perform a diff and uh, of the configurations, and uh, we also generate something called as a change log. And when I say change log, this is going to be like uh, the uh, uh, like the uh, what exactly has changed between one configuration and the other, right? So, and uh, you know that's something very critical, and you may want to know what exactly has changed. And we have these number. We can also go and view them. We can also see what exactly at a high level has changed. And then we can also email you this. So as and when the change log is generated, we can send out an email or a Slack notification so that the customer knows that there has been a significant change uh, if it is unplanned, right? So they can go ahead and immediately look at that. And once we have all this uh, configurations, uh, you know, we also go ahead and up, uh, update the device data model. So we have this uh, something called as config element. So this is where the the native Yang model or the open config model is going to be there within Atom. So uh, you know, we'll go keep updating this particular uh, device model e each time there is a change. Now this change could be uh, as even uh, for the ones that even Atom does, right? For example, Atom goes and does some kind of workflow uh, execution or maybe a service a service model or a service orchestration, maybe it goes and remediates some compliance policies, right? Anything that Atom does, we're going to make sure that the changes are reflected as part of the device model. So this is going to be coming in as part of the config elements here. Now, this is the config management aspects. Right? You can do uh, a lot uh, of sorry, excuse me, one question. I do have a question for you. Um, I think a couple of times back, you had a pretty substantial uh, workflow. Um, are there, maybe I missed it, but are there error correction or error uh, testing or corrections within the workflow that, that you can run? Yes, you can. So that's that's the that's a piece uh, here. Now let me take you to that section here. Just this to make sure that you're, you know, like there, so that your workflow isn't, isn't jacked when you, when you, before you execute. That is true. So we could, uh, you know, for every task, you could do that. This is, these are the sections that I was highlighting earlier, where you know, we can go ahead and specify as very specific error scenarios, or it could be very generic error scenarios. So either ways, if you figure out any of that, we can immediately make sure that there's an action corresponding to that. So that is a way to do that, yes. All right, thank you. Another quick question. Um, is there feature parity between the, the cloud-based edition and the, the, the prem-based? There is. So there is no difference between the two. The, the feature parity is absolutely there. It's what, what you get in the on-prem is what you have on the cloud as well. There's no change. Uh, just that we're trying to enhance uh, the, the experience from our side so that it's, it's more self-driven from a SaaS perspective. But that's again going to be available as part of the on-prem as well. So to your question, yes, we have complete feature parity there. Cool, thanks. Right, so yeah, so 
So once we have the configurations, we want to make sure that they are always maintained, right? So there are two ways of going about it. There's something called as a service compliance that is associated with the services. So any service that you create, we make sure that it is always maintained. And any change to the configurations for that particular service will immediately flag that, and then you can go ahead and remediate that. But for all the other set of configurations that is not part of a service, it probably is not really customer facing. You know, sometimes gets uh, you know, uh, you know uh, hidden, right? So you really don't pay attention to that sometimes. So that's where you can define your standard or golden standard policies for that. So that is where you can, uh, you know, choose uh, Atom's framework to go and define that. So here I'm just taking one of the examples. This is uh, for a netconf based device where you can choose the platform. Then you can say these are my default uh, values for that particular, um, uh, you know, particular policy, right? And then you can go ahead and define a condition. So in this case, I'm trying to make sure that I have my V4 and V6 address for my loop back zero always maintained. So I have that. And I can also go ahead and specify uh, template uh, templates. So I can templatize this, right? So I have we have Jinja template support. So you can even have these values coming in from the rule variables as well. But in this case, I have them hard coded, right? And then I want to make sure that you know when the audit is performed, uh, how do I uh, act upon it? So the two ways, right? If there is the the CLI of the the particular configuration is always maintained, uh, I mean it's already present, uh, so then it's fine. Right? We go to the next condition to validate that. But then if it is not, then we kind of uh, go ahead and make sure there's a severity that is applied to that, and then you can also you know use this uh, section to go and define what is the how you do how would you basically remediate that now here we have to maintain that v4 v6 or a combination or all those co permutation combinations have to be maintained so uh, we have the you can see there's a for loop involved there's a conditional statement coming in all of that can be applied here but we also have this uh, uh, test bed mm -hmm. kind of environment where you can go ahead and uh, you know play around and, and kind of change your logic here and uh, define and that as well Right. So you can, in this case, you can go ahead and just run the tests and then we're going to, uh, you know, give a, give you an output and based on this unmatched content, you can go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, uh, write your logic there. And then the same uh, policy can yep. be. Uh, um, yeah. So those conditional d names, was that specific to that one device or is this for all the devices in your network? Yes. Yeah. So this is just a policy at this point. Uh, the but application a to a specific. It would be across all your devices because it doesn't make sense if it is. No. Yeah, no. In this particular, yeah. In this particular scenario, I do agree it does not because this is going to be more of a, a single uh, single device. I do agree, but we've not got to that stage where we are going to choose an, a device yet. This is we're still at the policy level. We're going to go to the next section where we're going to apply it to a particular device or a group of devices. Okay, so I mean, could you use like an asterisk for the ninety-eight in the in the last? You talk could, yeah. You can have regular you expressions. Find yeah, the next yes. one or something. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can do that. Yeah. Thank you. So to again uh, clarify, what is being shown here is a policy. So in in the policy itself, you can have uh, absolute IP addresses if you're looking for a specific IP address as an allowed value. And this policy, the earlier screen where we are doing the validation is just to validate against a particular device's configuration. It's only to build a policy at this stage. And later on, this policy will be applied on one or more devices. So that's that, at that step, you'll have a lot more control if it is uh, applicable to all switches, all routers, all, all firewalls, or all switches in a particular location. All such things can be done later. On. OK, thank you. So once and we have a lot of the a lot of those policies, uh, right? Right from your day zero kind of policies, your routing uh, metrics, anything that you want, you can go ahead and define them. You have a lot of them. Multi-vendor policies are also available, and you could define CLI-based policies. You, and the uh, you know you can the, the same XML templates that you saw. You can even go ahead and have uh, some of the XPath-based expressions also that you can mention to create these policies. And to the next section, uh, this is where you would basically go ahead and define them or kind of apply it to a specific set of devices, right? So here. This is where you can bundle them or multiple policies. You can also choose uh, uh, different values for your different regions, for example, right? So you can have different profiles for each of your regions, change these default values uh, so that it suits a particular region. And then you will go ahead and choose that particular device or a device group. A device group could be, again, a, a region or maybe a data center or even a set of platforms that you're trying to look at, right? So you could go ahead and define them. So to your question earlier, you can, we can go ahead and choose that particular device here. And then you can uh, choose the, uh, the, uh, the audit configurations. You can say what is uh, the schedule that you want to audit this, et cetera, right? So you can choose that. 
And then, uh, then once we audit it, what we're going to come out with is a report. And this is a very comprehensive report, which is going to uh, tell you, you know, know what are the, uh, how that particular uh, the device in the network is fair against your different policies and the templates, right? So you can see, you know, we go very granular here, the policies, the rules, the condition names, et cetera. When was the configuration retrieved, et cetera. Everything is basically shown here. And then you can also go ahead and uh, filter this report. You can also go ahead and pivot at, at different levels and figure out how you are you know, at a high level, how your devices look, how your network is looking. You can save these, pin them to the dashboard that I just showed you there, right? You can even pin the values here and we'll keep updating them, right? So have this uh, report, uh, you know, it's gonna be very handy for, for our operational folks to really understand how the network is looking. And then you can also get to remediate that, right? You can, can see that, okay, this is uh, information, this is the expected pattern and uh, what is the remediation commands that all comes in. And then you can go ahead and choose the remediation. So this is where you'll see all the different policies that have failed or are non-compliant at this point. And then we have the, the fixed configurations as well, which for each of them, uh, which will be pushed onto the device to make it compliant. So you can schedule the remediation. Once we remediate, we'll make sure that the report and the dashboards are updated so that uh, you know, we have the, the latest uh, the results in front of you. Of course, the reports can be downloaded, emailed, all those options are definitely there. Now, once the compliance is one aspect, but uh, what if you want to do this as part of uh, a workflow? Because you know, with every automation that you would do, you probably want to make sure that you know, your final configuration that you're pushed as part is, is compliant as part, of a, as part of your golden standards. So that's where the same exercise uh, can be done using workflow. So we have the compliance uh, workflow as well available to you. This can be kind of uh, you know, hooked up into any of the uh, automation scenarios that you're trying to create, the workflow scenarios that you're trying to create. And here, uh, this is this particular scenario. This is a ZTP process that we have as part of Atom, uh, where we perform the regular ZTP, DHCP based ZTP, make sure that the uh, all the uh, pre checks and post checks are done, and we onboard the device. And at the end of it, uh, where we have to basically go ahead and push a set of day zero profiles, this is where you can actually call the compliance uh, script so that you know we make sure that as and when the device comes into Atom, we already have a compliant device, right? So we make sure that your day zero profiles are all are compared and then made sure that the, the latest and the, and the let's say the, the, the con config, the golden standards basically for your network is already available. So that's something that, uh, uh, that you could do as well. So that kind of brings us to the um, end of the uh, the demo. So uh, any more questions? What kind of integration to um, uh, IPAM APIs do you have? So uh, we do have integrations into uh, info blocks at this point. Uh, so that in terms of the uh, the uh, the IPAM or the DNS and all the modules are available with the with the uh, with the uh, info blocks. But uh, we do have our own IPAM as well. So for for smaller sort of use cases, we could utilize our own IPAM as well. Uh, where, as I mentioned, it's not only just the uh, as an IPAM, but we also have the uh, VLAN manager and RDR and RT managers also available as part of our IPAM. But your external yeah. integration is Infoblox is what we have. And that was really a setup to, to ask you why you don't support uh, Netbox. All right, so uh, just because we probably didn't uh, come across that uh, very often, but uh, you know, having said that, any integration for us, like, as I mentioned again, we, we don't take uh, you know, much of a time. So to bring in, let's say, even to bring in a vendor support, let's say, which is more exhaustive uh, in terms of uh, you know, the support itself, support metrics itself, right? For that itself, we don't take more than uh, around four to five weeks. Uh, and uh, for something like a net box, let's say it's in a completely API to when you want to do it as part of a workflow, it becomes even more easier because now you just, as we just have to uh, run, write an HTTP connector uh, to call out that particular API. So uh, on a case by case basis, it can even be done faster, but if it's more tighter integration, it probably doesn't take more than a week or two to bring that in. Okay. 